right, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to uh, bid you welcome here uh, to our launch of our very first graduate orientation training for the College of Business. We're very excited that you're all, you are all here. And we have um, several things to talk about today. But several faculty here has joined us today uh, to, to support this effort. And also we've got our librarians here today uh, to support this effort. We're going to be hearing from them a little bit later. Uh, so with no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and do some introductions. Uh, I've got Dr. Scott Cox back there driving for me. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to the first page. I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of your faculty here. Uh -oh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I'm the Dean for the College of Business. I, I know several of you already in, in the first cohort. We had, we had the pleasure of having a meeting here on campus, a focus group to get some feedback from you. So I got to meet all of you individually. We have some former graduates of our program that's here today. And then some new faces. So we're very excited to have you all here, like I said. Um, I think what you're going to find as you meet some of the faculty here is, is that they are not just academics. They are not just academics. Um, you know, having an academic preparation is very important. It's very important. You have to have that. But they're also accomplished professionals, and that's important. You know, our university is wholeheartedly um, of the mindset that we want to build A-plus practitioners. So we want to academically prepare you, not only for what you need to know in terms of theory, but also in terms of practice. You see, that's important. So as I go through some of the introductions here, you'll see some of those backgrounds. Um, you know, with my background, I spent over two decades in manufacturing, the automotive industry, the General Motors, mostly in HR positions, progressive HR positions. My last seven years was a plant personnel director for the Saturn plant in Spring Hill for the warehousing operation, the warehousing plant. So that's what I did. Uh, and, and then I um, also presently serve on a couple boards, a lot of our faculty do, um, to stay engaged professionally, not just for our own professional development, but to be able to market all of you. Because we know if we can connect with those professional organizations on your behalf, we can get internships, permanent placements, and those kinds of things are already happening. Um, we have a board of visitors. It's a 10-person board for our College of Business. And we have different terms that expire on a, rotation, on a rotating basis. Well, we have a couple openings coming up, and I was just able to uh, affirm recently, in the last month, we've got a couple of new board members coming on board specifically to help us with logistics. One is, and I've been trying to work on him for two years because he's a busy guy, but I finally got him to agree. He is the HR director for Walmart Logistics. And you talk about a big company in terms of logistics, that's a big place to be for logistics. Also got a director of labor relations for a large maritime company that's going to be joining us as well. So purposely wanted to, to, to make sure that we had folks that could really help promote our logistics programs, especially with adding the graduate programming. So that's pretty cool stuff. All right, we're going to go ahead and go to the next slide here. Uh, I want to introduce you to Dr. Mike Essery, some of the uh, cohort from the spring already knows um, Mike, but Dr. Esri is the program coordinator for the program, so you will receive communications from him from time to time uh, and communications relative to our program. But you'll see that Mike, uh, although he has 20 plus years in education, he has, I want to say, it's over three decades of experience and operations that he brings to the table. I, you know, I, I say he must have started when he was four or something. But, no, he's yeah. 78 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but, a wealth of experience. This is really, a, you know, what I say a lot, um, especially with a lot of my colleagues, is that we have failed at one thing miserably, and that is retirement. We have failed retirement miserably because we could all retire, but no, we want to have a second career and want to be in academia. And the reason that we want to be in academia is because we want to help you achieve good things in your career, and that's why we're here. Um, again, he, he's very involved with APEX. Anybody know who, what APEX is? Oh, we need to work on that, Dr. Essery. Mm -hmm. You want to tell them a little bit about what APEX is? Yeah, APEX is a leading professional uh, society for supply chain logistics uh, worldwide. Uh, I highly, highly encourage you to get involved in APEX. We have a APEX student membership here, club here at Athens State. Uh, a number of our graduate students are actually in. They fixed the chapter. Uh, 
Well, I'm also the president of the Tennessee Valley chapter of APEC. So, as most of you know, networking is a key way to find better jobs because most of the good jobs are not posted. And you may think, hey, I'm currently working with the government or whoever, and I won't ever need <coughs> to go to another company. I've worked for three companies that have been open, locations been open 30 plus years, and guess what? They're no longer in operations in the United States. They can do good jobs outside the United States. So you may either want to change companies or may not have the choice to change companies. So I highly uh, encourage you to be active. We try to meet about nine times a year. Um, we have a lot of good plant tours, so it's very good to get involved. Um, and Apex membership is free for two. So check with me on that. Do you hear that? That's a resume builder for nothing. <laughs> now, I, Apex certification has been proved to be worth more valuable than many MBA. All right, hear that? It's worth more to your career than many MBA programs. So I can tell you personally, I've received a number of very, very good promotions as a result of Apex. So even if you stay within your current companies, Apex certification is very valuable. So I encourage you to be involved in that. Anytime you're in a professional career, you need to be involved in the professional society. Excellent, excellent suggestion. And I will also add that uh, Dr. Essery had negotiated <coughs> the waiver of membership <coughs> fee with Apex. Um, for you to have that opportunity. So just know that. That was an opportunity that he negotiated. So again, we're, we're advocating your behalf. Um, and now it's left up to you, right? We need you to get involved and engage. All right, next. Uh, Tom Piplo. Dr. Piplo's here. I'm here on my left. Um, Dr. Piplo, I know, has well over 30 years in logistics, maybe even 40 years, I don't know. But he's, he's got a significant background in logistics. I mean, as you can see up here, you know, he was the director for Army Aviation Programs and U.S. Army Director for Security Assistance Management. Um, he has a very storied career uh, in public sector logistics, and he brings a wealth of knowledge um, <coughs> in that area. So we're very delighted to have him. He's taught um, for several years. So again, you see, see the picture here? You see the trend? We've got academics, but we also have accomplished professionals. And so, um, that's the benefit you have on in our program. Okay, next. Dr. Ladoris Bosch, she's not here today, um, but she uh, will teach finance classes. So you might have her in a finance class. Uh, for those of you who uh, were our students in the undergraduate program, you may have had her for financial management. <coughs> so she just recently finished teaching her first course in the graduate program. She is very delighted to be teaching in the graduate program. Uh, she has um, experience in the field. She worked for a large oil company, or chemical company, chemical company she worked for for about a decade before coming to academia, and she's been in academia a long time as well. So we're really fortunate to have her. Her coursework, her course design has been recognized nationally for its exemplary platform. So she, she is really good at course design. Okay, next, uh, Dr. Jim Kerner. He is the department chair for the logistics area. He's there here in the back. Um, now, Dr. Kerner comes from a healthcare background, and he has spent 20 years. 15. Or, okay, around 20 years, around 15 years then in healthcare, and um, and served in supervisory roles within healthcare. And he brings that um, to our business college, but he, he covers several areas in our college, and logistics is one of them. So the graduate program falls under his department. Okay. Now, we have some other faculty that you will see teaching in the program. Um, Dr. Scott Cox, back here on my left. I think some of you have already had him in class. And so he, he brings with him uh, some a background in public sector logistics as well. Uh, I know he's been in the military. Uh, he just finished up his Ph.D. in logistics, so this is a high-quality uh, person that has been academically prepared at the highest level in logistics, and so he brings that to the party. Um, and we also have other faculty like Dr. Mike Higiki. Anybody know Dr. Higiki? That um, 
is one of our information systems professionals um, in, in the College of Business that may be teaching some of the LIS classes, if you're electing the LIS track. Um, and also Dr. Lisa Rich, who um, may teach. Uh, we're still working out the schedule. I'm working that out with Mike Etheri right now in terms of who will be teaching. We're trying to plan ahead so that we will know the schedule. We know the schedule of the classes, but who will be teaching so we can plan ahead. So again, that's, that would be your faculty at this point. And as we grow, our plan is to add the staff, the faculty that we need to support the program. You know, initially we're in this cohort model because for a small university and just getting started, you start in cohorts so that you can be county of scale. You know, everyone starts at the same time taking the same classes, but as we grow, I hope to get to a rolling start. I hope someday, that's my vision, is to get to a rolling start, that we have so many students that we go to a rolling start and expand our program. Okay? Next. Did you know? Okay. Well, I just put a few of these up here because I didn't want to... I wanted to appear a little humble, okay? So I'll put a few of these up here. Uh, now I'm really proud of our programs here at our university. If you talk to me a few minutes, you'll find that out real fast, okay? But uh, what I wanted you to know as students, and many of you coming from our programs undergraduate, you already know this, okay? Because you see the news releases. But for those of you who are new, I wanted you to see the high quality that our College of Business and our university represents. We get national and international recognition on the quality of our programs, okay? And so these are several that in our college that we've received. Of course, you see in the upper left-hand corner, there's Apex. Look at the, a gold award in Apex. We got bronze last year, right? The year before, and then we got gold this past year. So we're waiting to see about 16, right? But we're doing great things there. And I know they're going to the national conference coming up very soon. September. Yeah, we're in DC for that with a group of students. Um, so I'm doing a lot, they're doing a lot of great things uh, with that group. But we have been recognized not only for affordability, but for the quality of our programs and the flexibility of our programs. And the thing that we know about students, we know this, is we know the number one thing, the number one thing on their list, if you were to say the most important thing about any, selecting any program, you know what the number one is? You know the answer to this, the quality of the program. That's number one. Number two is affordability, right? And number three is, I say it this way, how fast can you get done, right? Because you want to get done, right? So point A to B very quickly. So when we develop this program, that's all our emphasis on in meeting that relevant need or those needs, okay? So let me give you some fast fun facts. Now, I can have pages of this stuff, okay, literally. But here are some fast fun facts that we're going to share with you today just so you know, because I want you to be proud of the program that you just joined. We should do. We're the longest operating university in the state. Did you know that? 1822. We've been around longer than any other university in the state of Alabama. Okay. We have the second lowest tuition rate in graduate programs in the state. Only outdone by West Alabama. Okay. We have nationally and internationally recognized programs, which I've shared with you some of the the recognitions that we received. We received both the bronze and gold Apex awards in the, in the preceding two years. Uh, we ranked eighth in the state of Alabama in graduate earnings. Now look, look at that. Hmm. You guys are very intelligent. You wouldn't be in the program if you weren't. So now I'm starting to assimilate this information. We're the lowest cost tuition, but we rank eighth in the state in graduate earnings, which means your return on your investment is pretty good, right? It's a good value. Um, it's also $5,000 above the national average 10 years after graduation. So our students, our graduates, make more money than the national average 10 years after graduation. Okay. So we're doing some good things here. 100% of our faculty have anywhere between 10 and 35 years of business experience, which I've, I've talked to you a little bit about that. And they bring that knowledge to the classroom, so that's important stuff. Okay. All right, now let's shift gears here for a minute. Let's talk a little bit about our graduate program. Let's give you a snapshot of where we are right now. Uh, we had our initial, I think this was announced earlier in um, our initial meeting today, that our initial cohort, I've already called them, I've accused them of being a club already, because they were all sitting together this morning, but the six that started in our initial cohort in the spring 2016, <coughs> Um, there were six of them, and they've all returned, so they're all here. So we, we didn't run them off, they've come back. Um, and I know in talking to them, and they've given us some really valuable feedback, 
Um, I think they would all share with you that graduate education is a little different than undergraduate education. So we're going to talk about that today. But we have some really good feedback to know. In our new cohort, the starting this fall, we have 21 students. <coughs> Now, we were off to a slow start this past spring because we were in the middle of some, just a little minor detail of launching into graduate programs for the entire university, which you have to go through a whole accreditation process with SAC, COC, or your regional accreditor. So we just uh, was able to get that done along with, with uh, proposing the graduate program that had to be approved by the Alabama Commission of Higher Education. And we happened to also at the same time have a little matter of our tenure reaccreditation with SAC COC come up at the same time. So we're just a little busy in the spring. But now we are focused, and about May, our focus turned to um, this new cohort. And we fully expect to see the trajectory and the trend go upwards as we go forward. Because we're a great value. We're a great value. Um, we have a separate graduate catalog. And I noticed that those were put in your bags. So you have that. So. If you want to look at any of the policies or any of the information related to the graduate program, you'll want to turn to that catalog. Now, it's also online, too. So if you don't have a handbook on you, you can easily go online and pull it up online as well. There's also a graduate program cohort schedule. I mentioned this earlier. You know, our graduate program is on a cohort model right now. That means the group you start with should be the group that you end with. Uh, and there's a lot of benefit to a cohort model because you will, you know, it's like I tried to tell my girls, and of course my baby bird's a PhD student in Michigan State, so she's been out of high school for a while, but I tried to tell her back when she was in high school and they worried about friendships in high school and that sort of thing, I said, you know what, in high school you probably won't even see any of these people anymore after <laughs> you graduate. Think about it, how many of your high school grads have you, or classmates, have you seen since graduation? Usually it's far and in between, if any. And, but now, where she is now in graduate school, she will maintain those professional relationships just like all of you will with your classmates, probably for a lifetime. You know, would you agree with there's cohort? I mean, they're already sitting together because they're sharing stories, here's how things are going at work, what are you doing with this? And you have, you have built-in network that you can use now for a lifetime, and that's pretty cool. Uh, we had the focus group we talked about uh, back in July, and what we're talking about today is a direct result of that. So as we move, and we'll continue to look for feedback from all of you on what we can do to get better as we move along uh, in, in this process. Okay, next. All right, we thought we'd take just a few minutes to level set us on what's graduate education about, how is it different? Now that may seem like a, you know, a simple question, but I think that, like I said, our first cohort would agree, you know, there may have been some surprises in terms of how much study time, you know, is this going to be different, what does it look like? So we wanted to talk a little bit about that. There's distinct differences between undergraduate and graduate education. And the most successful students will be those who really understand those differences and are prepared for those differences, okay? And if I just kind of summarize it here, there's higher order work. Think about it when you're in high school. You could pretty well be a straight A student if you had a good memory and you studied long enough, right? Didn't matter how well you synthesized information or assimilated it. As long as you had a pretty good memory, you could remember lists, you could get by pretty well, right? But not when you got to college, right? Because now it was more than recall, it was assimilation. Well, at the graduate level, you're taking critical analysis and assimilation to a higher level. That's the higher order work. You have this information, you have a situation based on your knowledge and ability to conduct research or reach out to other resources, how are you going to solve that business problem? That's what makes you relevant to organizations, and that's what we're after. So in addition to higher order work, you've got the research I talked about, and then also the component of professional development. You know, as a, as a retired HR director, if I'm looking to hire a professional, and I've hired many logistics professionals in my day. I came out of warehousing was my last job. I hired a lot of logistics professionals. If I didn't see some active participation in a professional related organization like APEX, okay, relative to that person's discipline, I would be asking the question, where have they been, right? So you want to make sure that you're staying involved in those business related uh, disciplines and their professional organizations. Okay. 
Breadth of skills is about focus, mentorship, and taking a minimal number of classes. It's not breadth, it's about focus, okay? So in, even though you had a major in your undergraduate program, uh, we're going to take it even to a more focused emphasis in nature. You're going to have more focus. You're becoming from proficient to expert, okay? So as an undergraduate, you might have learned how to juggle four or five classes at the same time. Uh, it's not that way with graduate work, you know, especially in our, the way our cohort model is built is two classes at a time. Okay, um, and the emphasis is going to be how to do independent research and assimilation. Now, I've had students in graduate education tell me something like this before. I don't need to know how to do research. I don't need to know how to write APA style because I work for a Fortune 50 company and I don't need to know how to do that. Well, given that I came out of the Fortune 1 company at the time, <laughs> I say very quickly, have you ever had to provide a business proposal? Have you ever had to sell your idea? It doesn't get bought in based on your opinion. It gets bought in based on the research and how well you articulate. You come up with an idea, but defend it with your contentions. So research, ability to articulate, which APA style or having a style will allow you to do, and I know we've got folks who are going to talk to us about that a little bit later, is so very important, so very important. So with graduate education, what we look for in the student is to have a desired maturity, intellectual ability, of course, which you were selected um, as the selection criteria, a hard work ethic, and that you also have some experience okay, that will help support you in being successful in the program. Um, it requires less self-motivation. I would suspect our first cohort realizes that, right? A lot more self-direction. Now. My, my daughter would probably be so embarrassed if, if she knew I was telling you all this, but she became a graduate student okay, at Ohio University, where she went to grad school. And she said, well, that teacher didn't remind us about when that assignment was due. I said, you're a graduate student. You should know when your assignment is due, right? So, you know, you, you have in high school, you know, where teachers might tell you, okay, remember, this is when things are due, and kind of handholding. But when you get to graduate level education, it's more about independent uh, thought, independent uh, commitment, and your own time management uh, skills. So remember that. Now, you'll have professors, I'm sure, that are going to be very supportive, but again, you are at the, at the steering wheel. Okay, you're at the steering wheel um, <coughs> right after your, uh, your education. So you have more control over what you're doing and what you can gain from it, although we'll provide you some opportunities, like with APEX, we know what we talked about. Um, you have to really be good with time management. That is key. Probably if there is one single thing, now that I really think about it, that I've seen in graduate education has been for going from undergrad to grad, students having a great deal of difficulty making that shift in time management because they thought, oh, when I was an undergraduate, I could spend about this much time on my studies, and I'll be fine. But in graduate education, it takes more time and more investment. Would you agree with that, David? <laughs> so, yes. OK, next slide. And so since we, we mentioned time management, let me, I think I put a couple slides together here about it. Um, you, you got to think about work schedules and vacations. Now, I'm sure there's nobody in here that would do this, OK? But if you're scheduling a vacation and you schedule it right in the middle of an academic term and you, you email your, your teacher and say, I'm going to be on a cruise for two weeks, I can't do my schoolwork, that's probably not going to go over very well. <laughs> okay, so plan your time accordingly. Um, although cruise lines do have computers, so you can get it done. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, just, just make sure you're planning that around. Work schedules can be difficult sometimes. Life happens. You know, you might get called away on a business trip. You have to drop what you're doing. And you're like, well, I got that. I was going to spend this afternoon working on my paper, and now I got to I got to fly to Seattle. All of you are professionals. You're going to have that happen. So what you want to do as much as possible. I'm realistic about it. I really am because I've been there, done that. Is that you just have to do the best you can of using every opportunity you have to work ahead. Okay, as much as you can. You know, instead of saying, okay, I'm going to wait. This assignment's due Sunday. At 11:59, don't you know p.m. Don't wait until Sunday morning to start working on it, because things can happen. Life happens. Okay, so try to work ahead as much as you can. Uh, and as it says here, you know, research and 
scholarly work at the graduate level is not a nine to five job. Okay. Other things we look for, you're going to be dealing with a lot of information. And your faculty have spent a great deal of time, a great deal of time, in course design and putting these courses together. <coughs> what they're trying to do is make sure you have the right textbook, trying to make sure that they're pulling out, extracting the right material that they really need to focus on, make sure that you understand so that you can be the most successful practitioner you can in logistics. So there's a lot of information that's coming at you, right? So you're going to be able to deal with that information and be able to assimilate it. And then where you don't understand, ask questions, right? And there's lots of mechanisms in which you can get your questions answered. Your instructors is an obvious one. But guess what? Each other, right? Within your cohort, you're going to be a resource to one another. There's going to be opportunities for you to be able to help each other in assignments. And this is where you establish this network that I talked about. There may, may be professional organizations you belong to that you know individuals that have expertise in areas. So you use your resources to be able to assimilate and guide yourself through that information. Net, and so as you see in the last bullet here, essentially what does that say? Networking is important as a result of that, right? See, we all have different areas of expertise. And those are things that we can you know, self-guide ourselves into you know, creating a business plan and putting some research together to articulate that plan or proposal. But there's going to be areas in which you're not going to be the expert. Okay? <clears throat> you're just not. And so it, we all have those weaker areas. And when that occurs, who are you going to reach out to? Know who your resources are so you can reach out to those, those folks. Okay. Professional organizations. I know that Dr. Esri talked about this already, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but essentially here we're encouraging you to join APEX. Okay? There's a student chapter here. It costs you zero dollars. It looks good on the resume. And if you get engaged, it's going to open up some doors for you. Maybe not only for networking, but employment opportunities as well. Okay? All right. So in summary, uh, you know, master students are responsible for navigating their education. Integrity and ethics is real important. We're going to talk about plagiarism a bit today. What we talked about it earlier, you guys might touch on it a little bit, right? Because I know no one wants to intentionally plagiarize or cheat, right? So it's important to kind of navigate ourselves through uh, what's in, in bounds and out of bounds. But the foremost, we expect integrity and ethics. You know, in business, business ethics are so important, right? Who can, can I trust you? When I'm in a business relationship, can I trust you? Can I deal with you? Can I depend on you? And that's so important. Um, collegiality. Now, you know, my department chairs will tell you this. I love to be around people who disagree with me. You know why? You know, if you think differently, right? You're going to all at times disagree with each other about a discussion board, you might be talking about a concept, and disagree with each other. And that's okay. Just as long as you can defend your answer, then what you begin to do is appreciate the collegiality, but not contempt for it. Does that make sense? So what we expect is a collegial environment. And then also being familiar with policies, we're trying to do, to do some of that today. We're just familiar with about expectations. You have copies of the graduate catalog. We have um, program coordinator available to you to answer any questions you may have along the way. Um, and we expect effort, okay? Putting effort into this. Um, we're going to meet you halfway. We can't do the work for you. <laughs> okay. So we want to see that effort. And then also think about your employment. That's that time management, work-life balance. Uh, you know, to suggest there really is life balance, you know, work-life balance in graduate school. You know, I'm not going to pretend, but you do the best you can in terms of trying to create some balance between work and school. Okay. And you'll find if you have opportunities. Here's something else I'd add. If you have opportunities to be able to do something meaningful for your organization through a project or a paper that you're doing in the program, that's, a, that's an opportunity for you, right? So you're doing something with the organization, but you're also doing something to fulfill your academic responsibilities. So what that does is what? It's what I call a twofer, you know, T-W-O hyphen F-E-R, right? <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying. So that's important to do. Okay. I think, are we ready now to talk about the program itself? Oh, here's contact information. We put in here, before we do that, 
contact information um, for some of the faculty here that I talked about. They're not all on here, like I said, because there's several of the faculty that uh, could be involved. It's initially this semester, potential contact names that you may need. We have it available for you in your handout. Okay, I want to turn it over to Dr. Esri. He's going to talk a little bit about the design of the program. All right, it's good to finally meet everyone. I've uh, talked to most of you on the phone, communicated by email. Uh, I sign off on all the uh, graduate school uh, acceptance, so I feel like I know a lot about you all already, and I've had a few of you in my class already. Uh, and I'm also the advisor for all the graduate students, so if you ever have any questions, uh, please feel free to call, call me. We do have a pretty straightforward class schedule, but we need help on the ones you need to come to. Now, we have a very diverse background of our students in this room. And you will learn in many ways as much from your fellow students as you will from your professors. That's the key thing about the cohort. Y'all will be interacting with each other, uh, and you can learn a lot from your fellow students' backgrounds. So, so just to demonstrate the background, how many people do not have a business BS degree? Raise your hand. So a good part of it. All right. How many people wrote a portfolio for admissions? Raise your hand. A good part of it. About over half of you. And how many people are taking GMAT? Oh, I took it already. All right. Taking it already. Taking it already. Um, so we have a wide range of people. Um, and so, um, preferably, people will have a BS in logistics or BS degree in, uh, in business. But as you can see, we have a lot of people who really don't have a, a business background, and that's fine. Um, now, if you do not have a business uh, degree, anybody know the three prerequisites that you need to have? Somebody tell me. Stats, finance, and economy. All right, and so a lot of you, even though you did not have a business background, you took some of those already due to your other stuff. Now, we have made a few exceptions uh, to the people who didn't have all three of those. Uh, we have several students who lack one of the prereqs, so uh, some of you will be taking three classes this fall. Um, but that's one of the exceptions we've made to kind of get you into, into the program. Um, now, the ones that took the GMAT, anybody know what the minimum score requirement was? 425. 425, all right? And uh, for the ones who have logistics background, operations background, uh, a lot of you did the portfolio. Um, and so, since you're all accepted in the program, I don't see you need to go in too much into it. Do you have any questions on the requirements for the program? All right, the class schedule on the next one. Dr. Esther, yeah. if I can just interject, is that you know, we just want to make sure that you're clear. We know you're admitted, but that you're clear also because we want you to be ambassadors of our program. So as you're out in the community and you can talk about your experience in the program, so is it, you know, if there's any questions you have around admissions, maybe you weren't particularly clear about, then we can answer those questions for you. Either yeah. offline or today, whatever works. And one of the things you can tell any, any of your friends that maybe think about the program, if you don't have the experience to do the portfolio, uh, we can let you enter the program without taking the GMAT, but you have to agree to take it that fall semester that you, you know, that you're accepted, and you must make the minimum score. And if you don't make the minimum score, that's as far as you can go. So we do have a couple people in here who still have to take the GMAT, uh, and I think if you study it, talk to some other people who've taken the GMAT, I think they'll do fine. But if you don't make the minimum score, uh, that's as far as you can go. Through. I found a really good. I can send you the link. I found a really good free online. <coughs> And I took it the first time, and the second time it was just showing you like because I'm a I'm a math degree, but even the math part, but it's just showing you like how to approach the questions. And once they showed me how to approach it, I was like, oh, this is all it is. So I there's a really I can email you the and link because it's a it's it, it's free. There's all these videos, and like I said, a lot of it is just understanding how you approach the question, not even especially with the math. 
anything. Is there anything else? All right. All of you will be in the same two classes starting Monday. And that's going to be a shock for some of you. I had three students in my graduate class this summer. So now you're going to be having 27 people, so it's a big, uh, a big growth. Um, so this semester, everyone in here will be taking the same two classes. And then the next semester and next summer, you all will be taking classes with your cohort. But the last semester uh, for the spring people, you will be taking, everyone will be taking the same classes again if you're in the management track or logistics track. All right. So you will be taking classes again a year from now uh, with some of the same people that you're starting this fall. And so hopefully everyone hangs in there and we have no losses to the program uh, and we'll all take them together. So there are two different tracks. How many people are in the uh, management track? Raise your hand. All right. And then how many are in the uh, Information systems track. And how many people didn't raise their hand? <laughs> <laughs> how many people don't know? Uh, it looks like more of you are in the uh, information systems track. Anybody have, uh, there's only three different classes uh, between the two tracks. Is anybody undecided which way you're going yet? All right. We still have a little bit of time to make that decision, but uh, we'll, if you need any help deciding, just let me know. Now, the, I, I just want to point out, and you might, have, uh, might be covering that, but um, just want to make sure to point out with the LIS track, we designed it on purpose so that you will have a SAP certificate when you leave our program. So not only will you have a logistics degree with an emphasis in, uh, in uh, logistics information systems, you will also leave with a SAP certificate. Now SAP has been in demand, um, high, high demand, and especially in this regional area. Uh, so we are getting students uh, jobs and internships because of the SAP certificate. So it's a bonus. Okay, so you know it's fine if management works better for you. You have to look at what you're trying to do with your career in logistics. But I just want to point out for the LIS that you do leave with a SAP certificate if you do the LIS track. Well, let me clarify that is a, it's a certificate. certificate, not a certification. Right, right. So that means you've had exposure. Dr. Cox, you may, you may want to go into this. I don't know that we're planning on doing a lot of SAP software. Hands-on stuff? As it stands right now, there's not a ton of hands-on stuff. Maybe in the last class you might get a little bit. But right now it's more uh, theoretical, conceptual, research-based, but it will include SAP material. Now, SAP, a lot of you know, is a brand name, but it's an ERP system. Mm -hmm. Just a brand name for that. And there's not very many logistics jobs that you will be in where you don't have exposure to ERP. Because if you do, you're not working for a world-class employer. Because ERP is what not only do you use to communicate within your company, but with your suppliers and with your customers. So uh, it's very important um, to know as much about it as an uh, ERP system as possible. <coughs> now, most companies, including the federal government, the federal government here at Redstone, they took the SAP and did what to it? How many people, Tom, you probably know, they customized it, right? Uh, so, um, and the more you customize the system, what happens? It's like everybody has foreign languages. It makes it harder for you to do what? Communicate with your customers and so forth. So, uh, but anyway, you will be using the ERP system of some kind. And that's basically all I have. Anybody have any questions on the program? If not, we'll turn it over to our librarian. We're going to go over um, some information, and then when they're done, I've got one more thing we need to do uh, in housekeeping wise and wrapping up. Okay? Do you want us to go over? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, because we're recording this for the episode. I have to sit down and set a few minutes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Need some shoulder straps for that. <laughs> like a hot dog vendor. Very, very, very good. 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 Very
business librarians. So we are will be embedded in your classes. So I'm going to show you how to access access to us and contact us through your Blackboard class. But we're going to talk about a few things today. First, I'm going to go over some uh, resources of the library. Show you some library guides and one of the Blackboard classes. Uh, that you're in. And then Jennifer's going to talk about APA writing guidelines and differences between undergraduate and graduate research. Okay. I think I'm going to have to sit down and do this. I don't know if I can actually. Is there a chair up there for you? Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, so right. Well, maybe I can just do this. Okay, let's see if that works. Um, do you want to? Here, we can do that. Um, let me. I don't know. Let's see. You're going to plug in. Yeah. That's okay. I think that can work. Okay. Uh, just minimize that because I'll have to come back to that. Close it down. Yeah. Association, um, but it is used in social sciences um, and business uh, as well as psychology. So you're going to be using that in your classes. Um, that dictates the formatting of your papers, it dictates the sections that your papers are split into, and it dictates the style of the references, footnotes, endnotes, things like that. Um, and all of that's very important to know, but first of all, I want to stress. It's less important to know all of the details of APA style than it is to know where to find the style guide, okay? So don't worry, like, I've been doing this stuff for 12 years now. I actually, I'm really weird, I love the citations. Um, don't ask me why, I couldn't explain it. I just love, there's something aesthetically pleasing about a nicely formatted citation, I just love it. So, but I still, I could not tell you just like standing here, I could not say, okay, this is how you format a citation for a magazine article in APA. I don't know, I have to look it up, okay? Um, so don't worry about the details so much. Um, at, at least don't worry about no, like remembering the details. The important part is to know where to find the information. And the other really important part, um, especially when you're doing your references, is being able to recognize what kind of source you are citing. That can get really tricky, especially because APA <laughs> hasn't been updated since 2009, and they still call a blog a <coughs> web log page or a web log entry, something like that. So they're a little behind the times. So you know, if you've got, say, I actually had a professor come to me last earlier this week with a. It was from the Nation magazine, or no, I'm sorry, it was from Newsweek magazine. I just remember seeing the little in, the red in in the top. But it was uh, from Newsweek magazine. It was from their culture page online. And it had a dated text. So we weren't sure if it was a blog post or if it was an article that had actually appeared in the print version of Newsweek and then also appeared online. These things matter, but don't get bogged down with them. Because if you have something like that, you're like, I don't know what this is, that's what we're here for, okay? So we can help you figure that stuff out. We can help you make that the best guess um, on what something is. Um, so just know, it's much more important to know where to find out than to actually remember all of the details of the style. The other thing you wanna know, you're going to be doing some writing in your classes. Um, with the idea of publishing, possibly submitting for publication. 
And even though APA is the style that is used in business, a lot of publications have their own style. So the, I'm making up titles here, but the Journal of Supply Chain and Logistics Management might have its own very special citation style and reference style that only it uses and nobody else does. So again, the important thing is knowing where to go to find out what the style is and where to go to find out how to uh, do, how to use the style, okay? Uh, so that's something that the librarians can help you with as well as, of course, your professors. Um, but don't, get too, don't let yourself get too bogged down in those details, okay? The other thing I want to talk to you about is um, the difference between undergraduate and graduate level research. Dr. LeFever covered sort of the differences between your work ethic and how you approach your work. Um, there are differences in the way your research assignments are going to be presented to you as well. Um, I believe there's one class this semester, everything's already posted, and you do have an assigned topic for a paper. That is not always going to be the case. I think some people in the um, first cohort can attest to that, that sometimes you're just told write a paper on logistics. And you have to pick your own topic and you have to figure out the best way to narrow it so that it's not too broad, but leave it broad enough that it's not too narrow. And there is some real, it's a little bit tricky to do. Um, the other thing is in undergrad, you're told you need to have four sources. At least three of them have to be from scholarly peer reviewed journals. Right? And so you go to the library and you click scholarly peer reviewed journals, a little checkbox. And everything that you pull up is scholarly peer reviewed. And then I know none of you would ever do this, but you just pick the first three from your list and say, okay, these will do. You can't do that in graduate school. Okay? In graduate school, you're expected to immerse yourself in the research that's out there you're expected to know as much as it is possible to know about your subject, your area. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to know absolutely everything about global, logistic, global supply chain and logistics, logistics management, sorry. Um, that's, it's a tongue twister. Um, you don't have to know everything about the entire field, but there's going to be some little area that's your specialty that you really get into that you're going to be writing a lot of papers on and thinking a lot about and trying to publish in, and you're going to know everything there is to know about that little area that's yours, okay? So that means you're trying to, you're, you're subscribing to feeds from journals and magazines that, um, that cover that. You are setting up um, table of contents alerts. You are going out and finding everything you can find and reading it and summarizing it and reading it again. Okay, that's graduate level research. Okay, and then of course the synthesizing it and making it your own and responding to it and being part of that scholarly conversation. Okay, so um, <coughs> that's what Mary and I are here to help you with. Um, don't be afraid to, to come find us. We're over across the street in the library all day, five days a week. So we're really easy to get. Um, and then Mary's gonna show you also how you can find us online. Okay. And it's nice about that too. Don't worry about coming and asking us questions. A lot of students think, I don't want to bother you, but that's why we're there. Yeah. We're here every day, all day long, um, you know, on the phone, in person to help to help you. So that's that is why we're here. Um, I wanted to show you a few things. Uh, here we have library guides. They're for all different kinds of classes, but there's also a library guide um, for logistics and supply chain management. And I wanted to show you that and kind of show you there's a what she was talking about finding information about APA. We do have some information in the guide that will help you and some links. Okay, so this is a guide to help you for your program. Um, there's research help for books and ebooks, articles, which we'll look at in a minute, different professional organizations that you may be interested in. And there's also a link for APA citations. Here's some information. We have a PowerPoint and a Word document um, with different rules and formatting uh, and examples and um, some tutorials, a video, and then here's one. I think, I can't remember if Joy went over yeah. this when she was talking about the Writing Center for Due Owl. There's an excellent section about APA 
all different kinds of examples. There's also a good section here about plagiarism and different ways to avoid plagiarism. And I currently am making a li another library guide for plagiarism. It should be done in a, probably a week, and I will send the link to you and um, to everybody so you can look at it. But there are different ways. It kind of explains to you the different types of plagiarism and paraphrasing summary, how to kind of avoid that. Um, but uh, that would be a very good resource for both of those subjects. Okay. And she was talking, uh, Jennifer was talking some about the articles and journals, like the uh, top journals in your field. Try and find them out. There's a list. top journals in your field. So this would be good to use for your research here. But also if you're thinking about publishing some of your papers, you can look um, and see and we can help you with some of the guidelines for publishing in these journals. But I'm sure there are more, but these are the top journals we identified. So. Uh, and the rest is kind of, uh, oh, here let me show you. Here's some workshops. There's another uh, workshop about APA and plagiarism. So if you want to look here too, there's a librarians and the director of the writing center going over that for you. Can I make a quick, can I make a quick comment? Uh -huh. Just because I think sometimes there's confusion around this. With APA format, while that is our adopted format that we use for our College of Business, the journals that they're talking about you know, that are uh, in your professional discipline, each of those journals will have their own criteria and format, and it won't necessarily be pure APA or another style. It will be their adapted style. So that's why when she's talking about providing you those guidelines, that it's not that, you know, specific to your discipline, we're not teaching, you know, all the different um, formats that you will need. It's because it's so unique to the journal. Does that make sense? But our College of Business uses APA. I, uh, I actually just saw a statistic um, last week. There are over 5,000 unique style guides <laughs> <Okay>. in existence. <laughs> You're fluent in all of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, here are some of the databases you want to use to find scholarly articles and company information. And you can uh, link to them from here. Um, I'm going to go back to the library website. You also can go here to link to those databases to find articles and databases. And there's a specific list by subject, and you can just click on this and go to the business one, and they'll be there also. So there are different ways to access these. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to So you know there's a on the business, you can click on this one, and then get other, basically the same list, but just you know, another. Here's a link for the five books and ebooks. If you want to find you know, books on your topic, you can search by title, author, keyword. We have a lot of electronic books on logistic and supply chain management. And we update those constantly. So you can access those from home. Um, that would be really useful. Usually to access, you can access the databases from home. You, you get a prompt, but you usually just need your first and last name and your, you know, your ASU number, your student ID number. in that class too, so you can just email the question and come straight to us. And there's also an ASU library link with some more information. A lot of them are um, And I use uh, Blackboard IM as well, so if any of you are on Blackboard IM, you can contact me that way. So there are lots of ways to get Any questions about anything? Remember we're going to help. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming. Sorry. I'll go to the back of the balance. It's pretty good. Come on, let's go. Dr. Cox. You can get me to the last slide. Just minimize. Okay, I'm going to get up here and close this out. Okay, so that was about.
about an hour full of information. <laughs> so we hope that that's been helpful to you. You get an idea about what's ahead, a little bit about what we're doing here with the program, and where you fit in. But I'm really excited again about you all being here. Now, um, I was wondering, do you guys like my shirt? Yeah. yeah. It's nice, isn't it? Well, you're all going to get one today. So we have a shirt. I promised the group that we met this in July. I said, I'll have swag for you. And so I have some swag. All right. So I was hoping to have three things for you today. One's on back order. I'll we'll have it soon. But what I do have for you today is a polo, this polo, for all of you to have today. So as you're leaving, you want to see um, Pam Clark in the back there. She will get whatever size you would like. We have all sizes back there. They're all the black, so we don't have different colors. But we wanted to have uh, a shirt that specifically identifies our graduate program. So they're all black and they have our logo on it. So pick that up. Also, for you to take to work, a stainless steel mug with our logo on it. So you can carry your cup of coffee or if you drink hot cocoa or whatever you drink hot or cold in the mug, you can take to work. So we've got that for you today. So that's a start. We want you to be proud of the program. We want you also to be ambassadors for us. And, and, tell about um, the experience that you're having here. We have, as you leave, um, flyers about our program. You can pick up a couple copies if you'd like, take with you uh, to share. And then I also talked the bookstore manager out of some book bags, um, recycled book bags for you. So as you go to get your books at the bookstore, you have recyclable bags on the way out. Is there any other housekeeping? Dr. Esri? Yes, uh, we are actively recruiting. So. If you have your HR manager at your company, if you would ask if we could come in and talk to them about our logistics program or any of the managers there, we could use your all's help. So if you could put me into contact with them, I'd love to come talk to them about our program. So we need y'all to help us put in the contact with Ruth and improve yourself. Okay, again, welcome. Have a great rest of the weekend. I'm looking forward to working with you.